One look into the annals of Counter-Strike history and you're greeted by an army of super teams. Collections of talent so impressive, so insurmountable, that they just had to win. They are the champions again, SK ESL1. But hidden beneath these ultra-talented giants, the FaZe Clans and Astralis of the world is one ever-constant force. It's Team Liquid, and that's what it means to them. The Holy Chalice now belongs to Team Liquid. The hope of an entire continent. One world-class rifling machine whose presence remains unwavering while the game's giants walk in and out of his life. He's ready to duel wow. here, finding the hands Whoa. of every single player in front of him. This is the story of North America's hero. The player who helped build the greatest team in the region's history, only to burn it down and do it again. The only constant in a sea of change. That's right, the only thing going for him. One more headshot. They're going to try and jump. Oh, my God! Elise! Russia coming up from long instead. He sprays down to Elise. Going to put it into a quad kill now. He's going to try and charge him. He runs in. That's the ace! Oh, my God! Elise! This is the story of Elise. Despite being known today as one of the world's best CSGO riflers, Jonathan Elise Jablonowski didn't start out by playing shooters. Elise grew up watching his brother play RTS games on the family computer, specifically Age of Empires and StarCraft. By the age of four, fights between the two boys over whose turn it was to use the computer caused the family to buy Elise his own setup. And that's where his dream took hold. See, among his peers today, Elish is a rare case. He's somebody who knew he wanted to get into esports long before it felt like a serious option. When he was eight, Elish told his Taekwondo instructor that he had no backup plan in life besides gaming. And I said, all right, Johnny Jabs, what do you want to be when you get older? You know, what do you want to do? So he said, I'm going to be a gamer. So I said to him, I'm like, well, what's your plan B? What's, what else? You know, why don't you pick something else just in case? He says, oh no, sir. And he points at a sign on a wall that I have. It says, winners never quit, quitters never win. And he goes, no, no, that's it. That's all I want to be. I saw all the other pro players back then about how they were able to travel around the world. And I just thought that I would be able to do that. And I, I thought that I had the skill. Elise's first taste of real competitive play actually came in 2013 through the StarCraft II World Championship Series, when he played at an American Season 2 qualifier event and lost a best of three to Select, a player who Elise actually named himself after. Elise literally meaning Select in Spanish. While StarCraft was his love at the time, Elise kindled a new romance behind the scenes, one with Counter-Strike. For years, Elise had played CS 1.6, but never saw it as an esports option that could compete at the same level as StarCraft. But everything changed when CS GO came out, and Elise realized that his RTS skills weren't totally useless. Spawn. Nanger does spot him going the site, but Aliga still gets the frag and he'll work his way in and he'll definitely get this bomb plant. But uh, Volcano and Yeo are going to be going ahead and running their stuff in here. Yeah, with a little HP, Aliga catches the headshot there. And so we could see yet another clutch here on this map if he can take out Volcano. And he does great flashbang placement. Great movement there from Aliga as well. When I went from StarCraft 2 to CSGO, I actually think there was a lot of skills that transferred over. And I think the main one is just learning how to learn. StarCraft 2 is a very individual game. It's a 1v1 game. And when you lose, it's only yourself to blame. And you just have to figure out the most efficient way possible to do things. Over the next year and a half, Elise switched his focus from StarCraft to CSGO and very quickly started getting offers from teams, at the forefront of which was Team Liquid. And he was so young and already so good. Generally speaking, we, we love to take those shots and take those opportunities to try and see if we can develop a talent into a superstar. For Liquid, it was an easy choice. Elish was a burgeoning young talent with massive potential. And for Elish, it was even easier. When I joined Liquid, I thought it was amazing because I obviously came from StarCraft and they were an organization that I really looked up to. They're this elite level Counter-Strike uh, team that I'm gonna be on. Elish signed to Liquid in March of 2015 and things looked great. He was part of a bigger play by the team to build an NA super team, and it seemed like they might be able to pull it off. And now it's going to be between Elige 
and the remaining three Virtus Pro members. Elige, nice headshot to start. A second one as well. And it's going to be now him versus Neo, the legend. Bomb planted for Neo as well, and he gives away his position, but this is just fantastic. It's all on the Legion. He still has the UMP. He hasn't been able to upgrade it whatsoever, and he's got a toy with an AWP at long range. So just hiding behind this pillar. This is crucial, but a nice shot onto Taz from long range. Oh my, and he actually clutches it with an SMG. By 2016, Liquid had scrapped most of its original roster, keeping only a Liege, Nitro, and a Dren, while adding Hiko and an up-and-coming Ukrainian talent named Simple to the lineup. Simple was coming off an ESL ban and was a young phenom still looking for a team to set his feet with at the time. But he also had a reputation, prior to joining Liquid, for shit-talking and a penchant for angry outbursts toward team members and his opponents. Thank you for game, Dumas. Thank you, sir. Really nice to play with you. You're playing like f***ing bitch. My nice. simple man. Shut up, you f***ing old f***. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think in general his skill outweighs his, his attitude. But alongside a liege in Liquid, Simple got an opportunity. And as the team start to threaten the scene's powerhouses, Elise's rifling was a critical part of their success. And all of Meister and the rest speeding up. That worked on B. They're trying to try and see if they can work on A as well. Elise getting a counter headshot, getting a second kill. Could he get a third as well? Nitro has gone down already. Elise doing massive work up on the catwalk. Flusher coming up from long in steady sprays down to Elise. Gonna put it into a quad kill now. One more kill for the ace, and it's one on two on the ace. Now Liquid, oh, he gets a jump in, and now Elise knows where he is, but JW back for the smoke. I don't even know what level of Counter-Strike this is. He fakes the bomb once, JW gonna try and see if he can walk out. He's very low on health, Elise on the other side. Grenade gonna be going in, and Elise, is he gonna try and charge him? He runs in, there's the ace! Oh my god, Elise, acing Fnatic in the 25th round. These were also huge moments for Elise personally. For the first time in his career, he was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the very best teams in the world. On paper, it should have been incredible, but the reality was different. Because behind the scenes, Elysian Simple didn't always see eye to eye. It wasn't really anything about like having two star players. I think that it was just a very obvious uh, personality conflicts within the team, uh, throughout the whole team, uh, to be completely honest, throughout the whole team. Uh, so it was very tough and, and I think that changes need to happen and we, we had to do them, just straight up. Elish has since acknowledged his contribution to the toxic environment at the time, but he's also fired back at claims that he was the wedge that drove Simple out of the team. During uh, the time when uh, Simple and I were teammates, I think that the whole time period was kind of blown out of proportion a little bit where I got scapegoated. And I think that the whole team felt the way that I did, but I was just the one that was kind of saying it for the team. After only four months, the pairing between the two young stars came to an end. The last event where Elise played alongside Simple was ESL1 Cologne 2016. And yet again, Team Liquid showed that they belonged among the world's best. Elise alone now versus three. You know, it's got high sense. That's a nice two-man spray down. Where's the last man? Doesn't know. He has enough bullets. That is an unbelievable clutch there for Elise. Might be, might be enough if Elise can get two frags here. He can. A two-man spray down. Make that three. Elise a clutch man on a beat side for Liquid. The full spray. He might get a kill first here as well. He's two. Actually picks him up. Going for the third. Gets the bomber as well. Alige doesn't seem phased by the big stage so far. They do get a plant though. It's a little bit of money, but Alige has been absolutely sick in these last two rounds. That's amazing stuff. And even though they didn't win at all, they went far deeper than most expected. That is the performance of their lives. And not, let's not forget some of the absolutely absurd, scientifically improbable clutches we saw there. Simple with the Optus flying down on the B-bomb site. No scope required that. Elise stepping up in this series. He played some big boy Counter-Strike tonight because you might not see it in the scoreboard. He might not have had the most frags, but whenever they needed it, when they're down 13-11 and they haven't won a single round, he's the one getting the kills. Uh, just absolutely incredible clutch performance from him. At the time, this level of international success was huge for American Counter-Strike, and it showed that Liquid's big play to assemble top-tier talent could work in the region. But even after Simple left the team, there were problems. This time with Elish, whose behavior was brought into question. I think Elish, when he first got to the team, had it pretty rough. He's a perfectionist, and he's the kind of guy that he works utterly hard, and he studies and reviews, and you could go over something once with John in two minutes, and he's got it. And there's players that might need to go over it 10 times, and they still might not get it. 
Like Simple, Elise was not much of a people person. He had the skill, he had the chops, he had the intuition. All of that was spot on, but he lacked in some of the interpersonal dynamics and the teamwork that was required in order for there to be performance of the team, not him as an individual. And some of that developed over time. Elige knew he was in hot water, but he also knew that he wanted to change. And so he pledged to do better. I ended up like just like messaging them again and just being like, guys, like I am going to do like whatever it takes. I know that I messed up a lot, but I'm going to, you know, work on my problems and, and fix everything that I can so I can I can be the teammate that you guys want to play with. Things eventually cooled down for Liquid going forward, and over the next two years, the team rebuilt itself into an absolute juggernaut. By 2019, they had a new powerhouse roster, keeping Elise and Nitro while adding Stewie2K, Twists, and Naf. Besides the new framework, Liquid also brought with them a renewed energy, what the team's management said was largely due to Elise and the personal work he had done on himself. When we started to see the success from the Counter-Strike team, that was a result of, I think, a progression in the mindset for John, where he started to put importance on the relationship that he had with his teammates. Seeing that development over time for John is kind of when the performance of the team was unlocked. And that's where so much of our success was cemented by John's journey through the team. And right out of the gate, this new liquid screamed success, snatching first place at the I Buy Power Masters from the best team on planet Earth, Astralis. So he's able to get some cover, and he's been great here. As long as he can hold tight to the pillar, he's gotten the second one. Naf will fall back into the pit, and he'll take a second one as well. That's it! Naf seals the deal! Although there were a few hiccups by the summer, Liquid ran rampant, winning pretty much every big tournament there was. Their victims were numerous. Fnatic at the Intel Extreme Masters in Sydney. He's got the CZ and he's gone. It's all on to JW. Smoked away and it's done finally. Finally Liquid get their notch on a Grand Slam. Ents at Dreamhack in Dallas. He can stand players on the other side. It's gonna be a kill for Twist surely. He gets the first. Is this where it ends? Alu in a three versus one. Just this tag, but he's got the kill, and Liquid have it. They've got the championship. They've got Masters, and two in the Intel Grand Slam. G2 at the ESL Pro League Finals in Montpellier. An absolute disaster, Stewie. He may have just done it. Double for him, and Elish on the other side. Oh my God, Amanek get a one versus three with 19 seconds. Unbelievable scenes here, ladies and gentlemen. Team Liquid are your Season 9 Pro League Champions! Throughout Liquid's summer onslaught, Elise was consistently the unofficial MVP of the team. He was also ranked the fourth best player in the world by HLTV that year, and many attribute that to two things. The first being his monstrous proficiency with the Krieg, which many considered to be extremely overpowered at the time. And the second, being his amazing skills as a rifler. See, rifling is a fundamental counter-strike skill. For many, it's like breathing. But for a very select number of players, it was an art form. And Elige was Picasso. What is going on? I was what expecting that. In the blazes. Elige has got his spray. Oh, all, he's man. got that spray down. Elige finds Ariel from Cap and he's committed. And his team was backing out. Now they realize they need to get closer. Oh. No, they don't. No, they don't. Elige can do it all himself. Better still finds the headshot lineup potential though in Elige. He's put them in overtime. And he gets 35 kills in regulation to do it. Unbelievable scenes. Elige, what a hero he has been. Unlike other shooters where spray patterns are often random, CS spray can be controlled. Study a gun's spray pattern enough, and you can fire at fully automatic speeds while maintaining surgical accuracy. I do think that spraying is the one thing that is able to be mastered. I think that it is very consistent. There is a little bit of RNG to the game, but it is something that can be mastered. And uh, I'm really proud of that to be able to say that I, I have one of the best sprays, if not the best spray in the game. Uh, so I think that it is masterable, and I think that anyone uh, can't do it with enough practice. And with practice and penance, Elige and Liquid had finally arrived. The Cathedral of Counter-Strike. Every person in this building, oh, 
If Liquid won ESL1 Cologne in 2019, they would win the crown jewel, the Intel Grand Slam, a $1 million grand prize given out to any team that could secure four wins at top tier DreamHack or ESL tournaments in a consecutive 10 event window. Team Vitality, on the other hand, who would be playing Liquid, had a strong team with Zaiwu at its helm. Uh, excuse me, Elise, rather, in Nitro. And walking over to A, where they'll be found by Zaiwu. Great hold, and Zaiwu to get the bomb back! Again, we said double overtime isn't out of possibility, isn't unbelievably oh. impossible, but it might be with Zaiwu finally hitting shots like that as he steps back into the door. And he won't plant, there's no rush. Slow it down, as Nap walks out, Zaiwu confirms the second map for Vitality! But. As much as the French challengers resisted, Elysian Liquid refused to be denied. Zaiwu gets Stewie, Elysian with the MP9s. Remember, we talked about them. Twist, oh, turn it around. He somehow gets a lineup on two. They had the advantage on him, and Elysian strikes back. A couple of kits available, but it looks like Liquid have a massive advantage. Elysian not missing many shots now. That's Apex hitting the deck. NBK with the orb, not the ideal weapon. As soon as you miss one, they're gonna jump on top of you just like that. RPK's been fantastic throughout, but he can't find the shots this time. It's Liquid with 14, they tied things up. If it's RPK that's dropped, they could be in serious trouble. That should do it! There we go! It's Team Liquid! And that's what it means to them! They've taken it in the fourth map! The favorites coming into the tournament have just unlocked the Intel Grand Slam at ESL 1 Cologne under the belt and a million dollars bonus! People were screaming and yelling USA and the bodyguards that they had and people are trying to touch them. I still was surprised that, like, this is, this is my kid. After the Grand Slam, Liquid immediately took two more first place titles at Blast Pro Series Los Angeles and IEM Chicago. It looked like 2019 was all but in the bag for Liquid. And then, well, they took a break. As they returned from the break in time for the Berlin Major, it was unclear exactly what Liquid's level of play would be, and fans didn't have to wait too long to find out. In this battle too, very close quarters, he's going to have an opportunity to a stand, they've done it! And they've done it without seeing Liquid find 10. But here comes the defuse in the smoke, can they find it with the spray going close, Sanji getting the clock out, he's getting close! A Vanguard have done it! They've actually managed! They've managed to take down Team Liquid in the best of one. They've given Liquid a 1-2 start at the new Legends phase. I, uh, that is absolutely unbelievable. And even though they managed to fight their way into the bracket, their first opponent was familiar. This is such a problem. I think that's exactly what's going to happen here. There it is, shot in the back. And Astralis again, proving that they are the greatest of all time, James. The arch enemy Liquid had once conquered had risen again. Astralis had taken the Berlin Major, what should have been Liquid's Major, and they were pissed. And then, at the Blast Global Finals, Astralis dealt Liquid a second, deafening defeat. And Device already wanting to come in through Mini, an excellent flash, Zipex takes him down, it's all on Naf! Ice in his veins, can he handle this heat? Bomb is tapped, not planted for him, he's got it down to the 1v1, Zipex could very well clutch this if he sticks it, no way! Astralis! Incredible! 16-12, a stunning fashion to win! And just like that, Team Liquid's incredible summer run was over. Between their glorious Grand Slam and the present day, Liquid's performance has careened all over the place. Some attribute Liquid's decline to the departure of key team members like Nitro and Twists, who left in August of 2020 and January 2021, respectively. Others just say their run was a lucky fluke. But Elise isn't worried. He believes Liquid will rise again. That's something that was always really cool to me about our Grand Slam win, was that we weren't just beating random teams. We weren't just winning small events. We were winning big events against the best teams in the world. And we finished it off at Cologne, where all of the best teams in the world were there. So it's incredible for me to look back at that and be like, OK, this was not a fluke. There's no doubt about it. We were good. Going forward, Elysian and Liquid are looking to a summer of major competitions and are aiming to get proper revenge against Astralis for their 2019 comeback. 
Elise even hopes that one day, perhaps Team Liquid will be the new Astralis. And when I look at what we can do forward, there's still so much room that we can do. We only won for a couple months. I want to be as dominant as Astralis where, you know, you're the best team in the world. You've won for years. I still think that you can always just improve as much as possible. And I do think that my ceiling is just going to keep going higher. I think I'm still very young. I'm only 23 right now. That is not even close to being old. I think that I can only just keep getting better. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.